Hey guys, I'm going to do a tutorial this time. A friend of mine asked me how to set up control room in Cubase and how to do QMixes. Couldn't really get it to work, so I'm going to do this video to help him and anyone else who might be having that problem too. So, first of all, I'm on Cubase 10.5, but it doesn't really matter what version of Cubase you're on. Uh, they've had control room forever. So, first thing we're going to do is actually go to uh, Studio here. Studio Setup. Sorry, not studio setup. First thing we're going to go is to audio connections under the studio tab. And you'll see by default, uh, under output, it goes to uh, main left and right. You actually want to disconnect that. So you want to make sure it says not connected. You want to keep this. You don't want to delete the stereo output because if you do that, then you won't have a master fader. So just have it not connected. So then you'll want to go to control room and then you're going to want to turn it on. Here you can see that it actually already has, it remembers my setup. Uh, so right now I have uh, my main monitors going left and right. And then the headphone output I'm using actually for ScreenFlow audio, which in this particular video I don't need. But when I do want to capture the audio and send it to ScreenFlow, I have it go to Virtual 1 and 2 on my Apollo. And that's pretty much how you set up control room in the audio connections. Uh, from there, we go into the mixer and pull up the uh, right panel right there. And CR, that stands for control room. As you can see, I have quite a few things here. One of the cool things about control room is if you have something like Sonarworks, you don't have to set it at the end of your uh, stereo master out chain uh, like you normally would. Cubase lets you put plugins directly before they go to the speakers. So when you put any plugins over here, like I have with Sonarworks, it only affects the speakers and nothing else. So you never have to bypass or turn off the plugin um, before you're making a bounce or, or anything like that. And same thing actually goes for headphones. So I actually have it right now, like I said, it's currently called ScreenFlow because I sent it to ScreenFlow. But uh, if I wanted to have my headphone mix also be um, affected by Sonarworks, I can do that. I do actually have that set up here right now. It's just bypassed. And if you go to the main tab over here, you'll see your options for your mains and for your headphones. Uh, you can, uh, if you wanted to uh, just have the headphones hear the click, you can have the click track on for your headphones and you can have them off for you or you can have them on for both. There's a dim button if you want to dim it. A little click control and panning. If you want to control the panning, um, and volume of the click for your headphones. Very useful when you're tracking. Okay, so the other question my buddy had was uh, Q sends. How do we make those? How do we do those? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to audio connections and we're actually gonna add a Q send. We'll call it, yeah, it's fine. We'll just leave it called Q1. And that is currently connected to nothing, but we'll connect it to headphones left and right. And then let's just make a few tracks here, for example. So we have four tracks over here. And you click on this E, and over here it'll show you the Q sends. So we made one Q send channel, right? So we turn that on, and that's what this is. So now, whatever is on this track, let's say, I'll just name them for simplicity. So I'll call this snare, vocal, actually, let's just call this drums. Guitar, keyboards. All right. So now, if we want to send these tracks at different levels to the headphone mix for whoever it is you're recording, we can do that. So we just click on the E. So we want the drums to send at maybe minus eight. That's cool. And then we'll go to um, we'll go to the next track. And we'll turn that on. I want the vocals to be pretty loud. So we'll leave that on zero. And we'll go to the guitars. We'll turn that on. Uh, I want the guitars panned to the left. And I want it to be a little lower, like around minus six. And the keyboards, turn that on. And we'll keep that panned in the center. And we'll like lower it to like minus 14. So that way, everything that is now going to the headphones, which we set to the headphone output, right uh, and you can see here if you want to change the uh, the mix 
at any time for the headphones to mix or cue, you can do that. So, yeah, so in this case, if you want these settings that you're applying in these cue sends to be what the headphones are hearing, you click on Q1. If you want the headphones to hear what you're hearing exactly, you click on mix. And same thing for here. If you want to hear what the headphones are hearing, you just click on Q1, and now your speakers will, will play to you what Q1, what you're sending to uh, Q1 sounds like. And that's pretty much it. Um, oh, there's also here uh, the options to control if you have want to have a little more control with Q1 in terms of click track, uh, talkback volume. Uh, if you have a talkback button like on here, I have a, a talkback mic on my Apollo. And what I actually like to do is uh, when I'm not recording, it automatically turns on the talkback. And when I'm recording, it automatically turns it off. I can really quickly show you guys how to do that. It's under preferences. You go to control room and auto disable talkback mode and you can have it auto disable when you're recording which is what I like to do so that means uh, I'll have I'll basically have it on by default and then whenever I'm recording it'll turn off uh, so that way I never have to keep turning on and off the button because usually when it's not on when you're not recording is usually when you want to talk to who you're recording so it's just a little more convenient way of doing it. And that's pretty much it. If there was anything that wasn't clear, just uh, mention it in the comments. Or if you have any other questions or maybe other tutorials you'd like me to see, just let me know, let me know down in the comments and uh, I'll be happy to make a video. Thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe if you love the video. And with that, I'll see you guys next week.